we to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to our Sunday School Hour. And uh, before we go to prayer, does uh, anyone have any special requests they'd like to make before we go to prayer? Anything at all? We had a... Yeah. Lonnie's granddaughter. Uh, she's waiting on surgery, I guess. Uh, yeah. Just anything else? Uh, Jeremy's a dad. He's oh, yeah. uh, at home now, but he's still having difficulty. He fell and broke some bread, didn't he? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Remember him. Any other prayer requests? We have a, a prayer list that's like three pages long, I think. And a lot of people on our prayer list. So uh, just pray for those that would love to be here that can't be here. So let's pray. Holy Father, we bow in your holy presence, just thanking you for uh, who you are and for what you do and Father, for the things that uh, we take for granted so many days, Lord, for your, all the things you provide for us, and our food, our daily provision, Lord, you, you supply all of our needs, and we just thank you for it. Thank you most of all for loving us, for your grace, mercy, and love that brought Jesus from the glory of heaven to an old rugged cross to pay our sin debt, Lord, we... I don't think we can comprehend the suffering that he did for us individually, each and every one of us. And Father, we thank you for that. We remember those in our church family that uh, are in nursing homes and those are recovering and, and uh, for Jeremy's dad especially and for Bill and Rita, we ask Lord that you would be with them. And, and Father, we just thank you for all the things you do for us. And, ask that you bless uh, the preaching this morning and all that's said and done in our church today will be done to glorify and honor Jesus Christ. And again, Father, we just thank you for the privilege of prayer. These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Again, I'd like to welcome everyone. And uh, I think Jeremy has a few announcements he wants to make. And also, uh, we're having our Oktoberfest this evening. At, uh, I think it starts at 4 four o'clock and uh, Todd and uh, Andy Lovejoy are already down uh, cooking beans and uh, so you know if anybody says that we're full of beans they'd be about right to see <laughs> Brother Jeremy. Yeah, thank, first of all thank everybody for praying for dad. Um, he is home but uh, he's still got some recovering to do and um, so he he's work he worked a little bit yesterday. He and mom he's trying real hard to get that Mexican cornbread made for this afternoon. So we'll see. Um, he he got a little bit of it done yesterday. We'll see if he can get the rest of it. He wants to get it done. So we'll see um, if he's able to do that. But a couple of announcements. First one, um, Vicky asked me to announce that if there's anybody that has had a change in a phone number, uh, maybe you your landline changed, cell phone changed, or maybe you dropped your landline and you just use your cell phone now. If you've had any type of changes in your phone number like that, um, please let me know or you can let Vicki know when she's um, back. She's visiting um, someone this weekend. 
Um, she's wanting to get our all call system updated. Um, we might have some calls that are going out to numbers that are no longer associated with, you know, some people in the church. And so we just want to make sure that we're getting those calls out to the right numbers, to the right people. Um, and, you know, especially with winter coming, you never know with snow us up here on the hill that we'll have to use that system. So, um, she just asked that if you've had a change, please let us know so that we can make that adjustment, um, in our system. And like I said, you can let me know, I can change it, or you can let Vicki know when she's back, um, either one of those. And then also, um, this coming Wednesday, the 25th, so just in a couple of days, we're going to have trunk or treat here at the church for our kids. Um, and so we would love for everybody to get involved. Hopefully you, you're making plans to be a part of that. Um, we'll be down over the hill here um, starting at 615, not 645, but 615. We're going to start about a half an hour earlier because of daylight. Um, but we'll be down over the hill, um, and you just pull your car down there. You can decorate your trunk or tailgate um, however you want to do it. If you don't want to decorate it, that's fine, too. You can just bring a camp chair and pass out some candy. But um, we'd love for you to be a part of it. If you're making plans on being there, um, I've got a couple sheets, I think, or at least on one of these tables for you to sign just so we can get an idea of how many cars um, to expect. Um, just to answer a couple questions people have been asking about the trunk or treat, um, if you want to come, like I said, um, we're going to start about 6.15, so if you want to come a little bit before that, maybe 5.45 or so to give yourself time to get set up and ready, and then um, I had some people ask about how many kids to expect. On a normal night of Kids for Truth, we'll have anywhere from 20 to 30 kids that'll be here on a Wednesday night. I'd say there'll be more than that because usually when we have an event like this, they tell their friends and their friends come and um, you may have some grandchildren or whatever that might want to come. So if you're buying candy, just you know, maybe hold that number 30 in your head, but I would definitely buy a little bit more than that um, just to accommodate for some extra. So that'll be this Wednesday, 6.15 down over the hill, and we'd love for you to be a part of it. Okay, my announcements this morning is a no, no, no. No choir this morning, no special singing this morning, and no cantata practice tonight. Thank you. Well, I invite you all to that truck or treat, but my men at 7 o'clock will still have church if you want to come up for church or prayer meeting. But like I said, it starts at 6.15, I hope. But we're inviting not only the people of the church, others also. We want many people, young kids to come down there at that time and... Uh, so anyway, we hope we have a good crowd, and it's maybe bring some young people or even adults that come into our church. That's the whole purpose of everything. Let me say a little bit more about our uh, our this evening, what's going to occur. Really, it'll probably be between 4 and 4.30 that we'll be eating. Um, we're, our plans are to have the meal, and then we're a little after 5 or so when people about finish eating. We're going to have the hay rides. We're going to have uh, pumpkins there for the kids to paint. Uh, different activities that way. Uh, right around 6 or so, 6 there, we're going to have a uh, bonfire over down from that, and we're going to have uh, our regular praise service, probably having some, some words of God, have praise from people, spend some fellowship around the bar we have there. Uh, I'll provide, get seats we'll provide it for you down there. If you can bring a chair, it'd be good to go ahead and bring your chair, but that's our plans for this evening uh, on this uh October 5th. All righty. Thank you. Do we have any birthdays this morning? Ah. We all wish you happy birthday. May your days be ever bright. May your heart be filled with sunshine. Trust in Jesus, he's alive. We all wish you happy birthday. May your days be ever bright. May your heart be filled with sunshine. Trust in Jesus, he's alive. No, that's right. I'm going to say something about Lonnie. How many of you all get a lot of these calls, spam calls and all? Just us? We oh, get yeah. about 30 a day. Oh, yeah. You know, well, Lonnie called, and I didn't realize, you know, I thought maybe another one crazy call. Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> Lonnie said, 
Uh, Jim, it's Lonnie. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you got a, a, a telemarketer on the phone, didn't you, Lonnie? <laughs> well, happy birthday. If there's anything else that uh, anybody has to say before we dismiss, if not, we'll dismiss to our classes. pounds of beans that we're cooking. So what I'm saying, if we don't use them all, if you want to take some beans home, bring it in a container, put it in. And uh, I know before, Brother Bar Carl Kelly has done this for years, you know? I know he did a great job. I had a, my granddaughter asked me, said, got on? Now, okay. If you try to put it on your lapel, the mic's turned the other way. How about that? Got it? I've had these mics for 15 years. <laughs> I've had more trouble with these things than I have anything. Now, can you hear me? If not, I'll talk loud. Uh, but anyway, you know, my da granddaughter asked me, said, Pablo, what time do you go put the apple butter on? I said, no, we're not making apple butter. <laughs> I said, we'd have started on that Friday if that's the case. How many used to peel the apples? 
Yeah, come on, yeah, I've had a lot of, used to, you know how many bushels we go through last time we made it? 30 bushels of apples of what we'd peel. And we'd, Mom will tell you, we'd put off about 220 quarts of pints together. The church would make a little over $1,200 on the thing, what we'd make. But that's a lot of work, you know, from the time of peeling and everything. So, anyway, we're in the book of Acts. If you want to turn to there and... Uh, Acts, as we're going into now, once Paul is converted and uh, talks a little bit about Peter, but it's mainly concentrated on, um, on the things that Paul is doing, and really you're seeing this start where we're going to talk about his first missionary journey. Something maybe you don't realize, Paul got, uh, time he does his first missionary journey from the time that on the road to Damascus, the light was struck him down, and caught, Christ spoke to him. He went on Damascus, and uh, you know, after that, he began to, you know, make it a going, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ there in Damascus and other places. He came uh, and went to another place for a couple years, went another time and come into where Peter and uh, some of the apostles there in Jerusalem, and just reinforced what he was speaking on. But then he left and went to Tarsus, that's where he was born at. From the time that he uh, called uh, uh, God on the road to Damascus, God called him, it's, you're going to look at right around 14 years now. But now, this will be, we'll be talking about here, his first missionary journey that he will be taking, and uh, along with Barnabas. And uh, I asked the guys again to put up uh, the... the uh, map I've got, make sure I've got this one here right, yeah, I think that's good, and here's what you're looking at, it just, as you read this, we're going to follow this through and read the one that up there, now they're not in Jerusalem now, really you got the place here called, uh, I don't know if it's going to shine that far, huh. here it is, see Antioch here, that's, Jerusalem's probably, oh, 200 miles south of there, that is the center, really, of the Christian faith now. Is, what does it say something about Antioch? What does it say? It was the first place you called what? Christian. Well, you had uh, Barnabas there. Paul was in Tarsus. See Tarsus up here? I'll get my markers here a minute. See Tarsus right there? Well, Paul went, I mean, Barnabas went after Paul to bring him down there, and they were... Uh, it was sent out on, their fir on the first missionary journey. Barnabas was a man you'll hear about in the fourth chapter and other places. You, he's a man that was very devout, uh, gave a huge pieces of land to be sold to give for the help of the believers there at the time that were suffering. He was a, sort of a leader in that. He was probably there, and Paul got the Antioch. He probably one of the top ones there, I would say. But he knew Paul. He had went to Jerusalem with Paul right after he had been, he had uh, made his commitment to Christ. And but then Paul went back to Tarsus. I'm sure that Paul didn't just stay there and just sit down. You know, I'm certain he went into that area. Right there. now, some of the places we'll be talking about uh, here in Tarsus. We're going to go from Antioch. We're going to go to Cyprus. We're going to see how it goes. This here, really, see it in Galatia right there. Well, what do we have in the Bible about Galatia? The book of Galatians, right? Talks about the different churches that Paul uh, wrote in, there in Galatia. Uh, so you hear this area today, it looks like to me on the map, most of this would be Turkey, okay? But you get down here, this is just what it says here, Syria. Uh, so anyway, with all the things that's going on in Israel today, if I, we, I want to put a map up here sometime of that. Israel, like I say, is quite a ways down from this. But Israel does join Syria on the eastern uh, side. And you have Syria coming down, then Israel. And you got all this uh, uh, Hezbollah. Hezbollah, Lebanon is over in this way. They're, uh, they're running against the Israel border. You go down to that, what's going on in Gaza. That's way down 
That piece of land, folks, is 30-some miles long and about seven miles wide. If you go to the Dead Sea, which I've been there with the, uh, when I went with uh, Brother Glenn Matthews that time, you, you're only a few miles from, from Gaza, and Gaza is uh, Palestinians have control of that. That's what they have, and that's where all the trouble's at right now. They're coming in and dug these tunnels and bombing all through, then killed all these Israelis. Now Hezbollah, which is up there at Lebanon, is now starting to attack also. You know why I'm going to have Brother Steve Cook in a couple, I'll have to look, about three weeks. I want him to do a thing on prophecy. If it's ever a thing about the coming of Christ, I see this as very soon. I'm telling you, it's a hotbed there right now. You know, Iran, Iran is, is way over in another direction, but it joins into Syria here. And uh, anyway, to get off from that, but it's, uh, we need to make it a matter of prayer, I'm telling you. And uh, I know I've been watching some of it on TV and could not believe the, the atrocities these guys have committed against those people. And here's what gets me, and I'll just stop with this. we got people in this country going and everywhere, rioting against the Jews, it's indicated it's their fault. Uh, they're missing the point somewhere. And I'll just say this to stop. No nation is ever going to take Israel. It belongs to God's already given it to them. So there are going to be a lot of troubles, looks like. Might cause a world war, folks, really. I, I, we need to pray about it. And here's the thing we need to think about. Before we go into a time of tribulation period, real tribulation period, this church, the body of Christ, is going to be out of here. Amen? And if you don't know Christ as your Savior, you're going to be left here. And I don't think there's any hope for you, really, especially if you've heard the gospel message. Got friends and loved ones, it's what we, we need to be reaching out to them. Didn't mean to be preaching all about that. I'm getting a backlash here. Too much, guys. I'm getting too much here. But anyway, we got that going on. I can't wear this thing on my ears anymore. I've got a hearing problem on this side. And I've had surgery, and that's where that surgery is all at in there. And it bugs me to wear that thing. So that's the reason I'm going back to this here. But anyway, uh, what you saw them coming, they went to, he went up here to uh, get this thing going again, get it where it's working, but I'm just having trouble. Here he is at Antioch. Now they're going to go right here. They went to Cyprus. Now that's in the 13th chapter. Paul and Barnabas, and with him at this time is a guy named Mark. And uh, Mark, I believe, was related to Barnabas. And in, in turn, he goes right here to uh, that Cyprus and uh, goes here to this, this place here, Salamis. And then he comes on ahead down to Pappas. And here, that's in the 13th chapter. The governor of this area, he received Christ as his Savior. There was a revival going on. Here's the thing about it. This is the time you're seeing the word of God moving to Gentile people. Is there any Gentiles in here? Yeah, every one of us. But that, that movement, you say, preacher, what do you mean? Is was there before? No, the first time I ever saw really a, where it was a move toward the Gentiles is when Peter was there and he was called to go to, uh, to, to meet a man that saw a vision and he, Cornelius, and he wanted, he sent people down there to, to get Peter. Remember, Peter is up on the roof praying, and uh, while he's there praying, like a sheet was dropped down for him to eat. And said, "Not so. I don't eat anything unclean." And God says, "What I call clean, don't you call unclean?" About that time, bang, 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 knocked on the door. Two men there from seeing Peter, what they want with him. Cornelius is wanting you to come to his house, and he was a Roman. He was uh, very high up in the, they had been under him and everything. Folks, he got his whole home together. Doesn't tell you how many, but he received Christ and so did many others. P that Peter, when he got back to Jerusalem, some of the people was kind of aggravated because he went there. Because it's just supposed to be to the, they're still living under the law, some of them were. And you'll see it still when you go through. But let's look at the people that are Jews that are seeing conversions 
and some that's even saying they converted themselves. They spent their whole life, and their mother, parents before that only head back all the way to Abraham, that God chose uh, through eight, Jacob, the 12 tribes, making the nation of Israel his people, that he has a great plan for them with the Abrahamic covenant and everything else you can hear mention. Well, then in Christ comes, says, I'm the Messiah. Let me tell you, he wasn't the first one that come said he was the Messiah. Others did too. But no one came, no one came, and this is what uh, amazing, that no one came was able to walk on water. No one came could be able to raise the dead. No one came to, could call the blind that's never saw it, could, could see, and you could keep on and on the miracles. A great many, in turn, come to receive Christ, even Jews. Day of Pentecost, when Peter started preaching, when the Holy Spirit had come down, all those people converted about 3,000. You know who they were? Jews. There. Now you see something like maybe going up to Syria there, or Samaria, I should say, which at that time you had Judea, Samaria, and Galilee. Galilee's where Christ lived, but yet Nazareth fell over his life. But in between there was Samaria. Samaria was, Samaria was really a people that were mixed between with their faith. A Jew didn't believe. If you, if you was a Jew, you married a Jew. But these were marrying others, you know. They weren't even coming to the temple there in Jerusalem. They formed their own temple because of such animosity. But they started to go up through Samaria, and, and his apostles said, No, Lord, let's go around. He said, No, we're going through. What happened when he got there at Samaria, a certain place? He stopped at a well, gets a, and now they went on in town to get some groceries. A lady come there that had a very bad reputation. She came getting water, make it short. Jesus says, Give me a drink. He said, Does a Jew have anything to do with Samaritan? He says, I will give you that water there. I'll give you living water. She received Christ, went and told others, and they received him also. But folks, they weren't complete Gentiles there. First big movement I saw the Gentiles was when Peter went there and Cornelius and his whole family was saved. But right now, what we're looking here in the 13th chapter and through is that you're seeing the movement of the church, the church, the body of Christ, beginning to spread, not just to the Jews, but to all. You know why I'm thankful for that? I received Christ as a Savior because it's to all, and every one of us here is Gentile people. And, uh, but still, you had Jews there even converted, said, oh, no, 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 they still have to be circumcised. They still have to do this under the law. No. By grace are you saved through faith, plus nothing else. Preaching a little bit on that, but if... Um, they went and, and they, they went in the 13th chapter, and they went to Cyprus, and at the far end of Cyprus, a lot of conversion. And uh, the governor there, it says on 12th verse of the 13th chapter, that the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed and be astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. But then they left, and they left from Antioch to here at Cyprus. They go up, they stop a little bit, their main place is going right there. That's Antioch. It's not the same as this one. That's the Antioch right there that he will, Paul and Barnabas will be going to in the, uh, as you look into the word of God. He goes to Antioch. It's in the last part of the 13th chapter. Uh, if you look at that, we won't go through that, but he really preaches to them there. And here's what Paul always did do, him and Barnabas both. When they went, they didn't just go out on the street corner somewhere and start preaching. Where'd they go? Synagogue. And why would they go to the synagogues? To bring forth the word of God. The men there would know what the Old Testament says, and they would know that the God says he's going to have, send the Messiah, their Messiah. So he goes in that synagogue group and begins to preach to them and talk to them about who Christ is, and it's, he's the son one that was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. He's the one that we've been looking for, that one you crucified. He's their Savior. So he preaches there in Antioch, and the Gentile people, they begin to hear it, and it says over in about the 1349, excuse me, about yeah, 1346, 
it says, Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was a necessity that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing you put it from you and judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life, we turn to the Gentiles. And uh, for, for, so he, for so he hath the Lord commanded, saying, has set thee to a light of the Gentile that thou should be for a salvation, that thou shalt be to a salvation to the ends of the earth. You know, going back, looking and watching, uh, one place I was watching, there were thousands of Muslim people there kneeling down in prayer. And they say, they're praying to the same God we pray to. But folks, those people die, they're going to hell. Do I want them? No, I don't. But what's one verse of scripture? See, I believe and you believe this is the word of God, not the Quran, right? I don't believe Muhammad is the Messiah. I believe Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus said to a group of people then when he walked on this earth, Jews, all those who are really being negative toward, toward him, he says what? I'm the way, the truth. Life. No man's going to come to the Father but by me. Folks, it hasn't changed. You know, I, I really, my heart went out seeing all those thousands of people down on their knees praying. You couldn't get a thousand Baptists together to pray if I have a big giveaway. They'd be praying, well, who won? The giveaway, maybe. But I have to say, there's a commitment strong about it, but it's the wrong commitment. And that's the reason you see what's going on in Israel today, that friction that's there. But you notice he gets it. So he gets into the 14th chapter. It took a while, but that's where I'm going to start. Kevin covered a little bit in this, I believe. 14.1, and it came to pass, and they left there, and they came to pass in Iconium, now you see here that I've said he, I get that dot going, and he's going to go from there to, from right across to Iconium. From there he'll go to Derby, right, or Leicester, I mean. Then he goes to Derby, then he turns and comes back. But right now he's been to Antioch speaking, and next he's going to go over here to Iconium, will be the next city he will go to, him, him and Barnabas. And it says, it passed in Gacomian that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, so that spake the great multitude, both the Jews and also the Greeks, that believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil, affected against the brethren. A long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord. Still they stayed. Let me tell you, these two men, Paul and Barnabas, they risked their life to bring the gospel. But here's one thing they knew. They knew that they were in God's will whenever they went. And I believe that Paul, and you'll see it even as you go through it, he had God, they both had the protective hand of God upon them as he spread the, almost the good news to other people. So it said, verse 6, they were aware of it, fled into Lystra, wait a minute, but the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. They divided. And it says in verse 5, 14, 5, And when there was an assault made both the Gentiles and also the Jews with their rulers to use them despitely and to stone them, they were aware of it, fled into Lystra and Derbe, the cities of Lyconia, unto the region that lieth round about. And notice 7. And there they preached the gospel. What did they go to these towns to do? To tell them, go through all the whole testament? They took the whole testament and brought it out and showed that Jesus is the Messiah. And then they preached the gospel. The same thing you'll hear me preach every time I stand here. Or any other preacher at this church or teacher or whatever. We teach what? The gospel. We teach the only way to come to Christ is the gospel of death, burial, resurrection of Christ. Then faith in that. There's no other way. And that's what they preached too. But notice there was a, they went now from there to Lystra. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. 
They seem heard Paul speak. Now, I want you to notice now. Barnabas started, and I'll make this statement before, again, right here, when they were at here in Cyprus, Paul began to take over and preach right there, here. Right there is where Mark, he left and went back to Jerusalem. Who's Mark? John Mark, the, the book of Mark. That's, that's who it is. You know, he later became very influential in the church. But right there, I believe he's a young man, because he saw Paul taking over, probably felt the threat of the people around them. He went home. And uh, I'm going to say he went home to Mama, too. So she was in Jerusalem. So anyway, but you'll see later that Paul really says that Mark has been a great help here. But, but there he left. And it calls later on the second missionary journey. Paul says, we're not taking him. And Barnabas wanted to take him said, no, we're not taking him. So in turn, they, call, they split there. But right now, you're going to see Paul being the main one speaking at these different places. And he says, the same heard, verse 9, Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, perceived he had faith to be healed. Isn't that something? Proceeded, he re noticed that man that had never walked, and he looked at him as he's talking, and he probably saw something on him when he was watching him that showed that he was uh, listening to what Paul says, and he was thinking in and believing it. I believe Paul could tell that if the Spirit of God was working on him, he walked back there to him, knowing that he's never walked since he'd been born, and he tells him, rise up and walk. And so in turn, that's what this indicating here. It's revealing to you God gave power to these men very early to do miracles so that they would show, God could show they were speaking for him through the things they're doing. And he said, he perceived that he had faith to be healed and said with a loud voice, stand up right on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. And when the people saw that Paul had done, they lifted up their voices saying this, the speech of Lyconia, the gods are come down to us the likeness of men. Here's the thing you see a picture of. Those cities that I just talked to you about, they went so far, they had synagogues there. But let me tell you, they were into false gods, false gods worship. Here immediately, they, what did they think? They think Paul and Barnabas are gods that come down, some of their gods, and they give them a name uh, of a god that they were worshiping. And verse 12 said they called Barnabas Jupiter, and Paul Mercurius, Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker, then the priest of Jupiter, which was before the city, mean, notice they have a priest of this false gods, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people to them. I think that was just a pattern of things they did before, bringing sacrifice to these false gods. And when apostles... Barnabas and Paul heard of it. They rent their clothes, ran in among the people, crying out and saying, Why do these things? We also are men of passion with you, preaching to you that you should turn from these vanities unto living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein, who in time past, time past me, past generations, suffered nations to walk in their own ways, let them to go out on their own ways, He's saying, nevertheless, he left not himself without witness that he did good, gave us rain from heaven at fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with this saying, scarce restrained they, they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. And there came thither Jews from Antioch. Here they come. Now you had these people that were saved but these Jews, they didn't like what these fellows were preaching. You know, all my life, I know the word, God's word goes to the Jewish people, and you have to come to God through the Old Testament and the law. You can't go the way they're saying. Those, those people have to be converted into the Jewish religion and know what you're talking about. Some received Christ and was converted, but these guys in Antioch, especially, they come on down to here at Lystra uh, and to try to get 
something started against them, and uh, they were very successful at it. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and, I and Iconium, both places, persuaded the people, having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead, how his as disciples stood uh, round about him, he rose up, came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. We'll stop there for a little while. Notice what happened. They came. They grabbed old Paul, because he's been the leader there. They stoned him. Listen, folks. Stephen, you remember Stephen, one that was called one of the first I consider him deacons. He was there in Jerusalem, got up and spoke against that about the fact that he spoke to that Christ is his Savior. They took him out and stoned him, killed him. Who was there holding their coats? Paul was. Paul thought he was the the thing that he was teaching about Christ was a false religion. On the road to Damascus, he found out different. Fourteen years later or so, he's stoned. Carried out. I don't believe he just passed out. They, hit, they say we hit with stone. You're cutting and bleeding and be all this. They don't just throw a couple of rocks at you. They stone you the way they would under, you'll see it under the law. What did he do with it? They took him, pulled him outside the, the city there. But notice what happened. Wherefore he saith, <coughs> get that turned again. And they, those rose up and came into the city. The next, next out, no, wherefore he says also, I'm going to get my Bible straight. I've got another page turned on me. I'm sorry. Howbeit as disciples stood, verse 20, 14, 20, round about him he rose up and came into the city. The next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. Now here's the thing I want you to look at a minute with me. You look at 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 12th chapter, 2 Corinthians 12th chapter, if you turn there. Give you a moment if you want to turn there. We we'll put it up here, but we got the map up here right now. Notice, 12.1, is it not expedient? Paul's vision of paradise. For me, doubt us to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ. Notice, about 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knows such a one brought to the third heaven. I knew of such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. How that he is caught up into paradise heard unspeakable words which is not lawful for a man to utter. Such a one will I glory yet, not of myself, will not glory, but in mine own infirmities. But though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. I will say the truth. And now I forbear lest any man should think of me, boy, of that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth to me. Now he's saying here that at the time that they took him and drug him out, stoned, Paul, was, he, felt, he said he indicated he was taken up into the third heaven. Now, if you look into there, when you look, there's indicated that there's really three heavens. Uh, our immediate atmosphere, the things we see around us today in the sky and all that, this is, it refers in the scripture. I could turn to James if I wanted to indicate that heaven. Then there's a second, that would be your outer space and and the, the, the moon, the stars, and the, the galaxies, and all of that. The second heaven. But the third heaven that he's talking about is referred in the scriptures more than once. You know, have you many of you uh, have heard, watched on TV, or maybe someone told you that he, uh, he or she was taken up into heaven and saw their uncles and their aunts or their mothers and all this? Have you heard that before? Do you believe that? person can go into that third heaven in that way. I know one thing, you can in your body, that's for certain. This body will never enter the kingdom of God, except it's a new body that Christ will give me. I'll give you something. One time I went to Columbus, Judy's brother, Dave Waller, used to be the athletic director, Cole Group, a long time. 
and he was voted in the Hall of Fame of the athletic directors. We went up there to watch him give award him giving the award, and um, the, the athletic uh, man that's over the athletic Ohio Athletic Association name was Dan Ross, and uh, he presented him, and he was over the whole thing. Later, it come down, and I was standing outside. Judy was but the place in the building there next to where they awarded it. And uh, Dave brought him over there and introduced his sister and, and me and told him that I was a minister. He said, I want to talk to you. Pointed at me. I said, okay. He wanted me to go off to the side. Go off to the side with him. And uh, there are people coming. Uh, Mr. Ross, Mr. Ross, we got to. Now, you just stay back a while. I haven't got any time to talk to you. <laughs> really? He said, let me tell you what happened. At that time, he had two things that was keeping him alive to keep his heart beating. This way he told me, so let me tell you what happened. I just want your opinion. I had a massive, massive heart attack. I was taken to the hospital. There on the table, whatever. All I know is that I know that all of a sudden I was up to a place and I'm walking through this hallway, beautiful brights. Saints of old were there, through there as I walked through there. But no, uh, all of the while I was walking, a, a black hand come and on my shoulder started pushing me down, pushing me down, pushing me down. I kept getting weaker. And all of a sudden, a white hand come and just knocked it out of the way. And the next thing I know, I woke up or whatever they did in the hospital. And what do you think about that black hand and that white hand? Now here's a man, wasn't no dummy. He was, <laughs> you know, he just tell me what he saw. Let me ask you, you think he was in the third heaven? Paul was there. But he's talked about things, but didn't tell you, say he knew anything like, except that. Here's what I think, and I told him what I thought, and you guys, you got, maybe you want to tell me something also on someone. I say that black hand was death, you know, and I think he got getting weaker and weaker. Well, listen, he's a, she told me he's a devout child of God, served the Lord Jesus Christ, active in the church he was at. I believe that white hand, it was the hand of God saying, it's not his time. And we went back to where he's at. And I, I, I was really whew, impressed. All that was going on, I mean, he was needed back out there. You just get back a while. <laughs> he wanted to talk about that. If you watch things on TV, people doing, say they went up and saw their grandparents and things like that. Can I say yes or no? But I tell you what I can say. Paul went to the third heaven. And he didn't tell you anything that he saw or heard because he said, it's not for me to say. But here's what God realized, I mean, what Paul realized. He was under the hand, he was under the hand of God. Hebrews, I'm going to read two verses for you. And then I probably need, what time are we getting to be here? It's not that late. Uh, Hebrew 8.1. And I just took a two, two verses here. And I could have took more, but I thought I'd just read these two to you. Hebrews 8.1 says, Now the things which we have spoken of, this is a sum. With such a high priest who sat on the right hand of God and the throne of the throne of majesties, in the heavens. If I go to 924, I just took these because you go right back over to Hebrews. Stay in that. 924, the writer says this. For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the time, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Folks, Jesus Christ is in the third heaven. Does that mean that he's contained there? No, God's everywhere. Well, he's here with us right now. How do you know? He said he had, oh, think his abode within us. That's the reason he hears our prayers, Barb. That's the reason we know when we look to him, and he has a great desire. Let me just preach this to you a little bit. It's very important that we as believers really grab a hold of what Christ has got offered to us. What's happening in this world today, listen, it can come right here in this country. It can come at your doorsteps. There's been how many millions cross that border? They don't know who it is. 
If you were our China or our Iran or something, would you send them there? To, what would they be there for? To cause trouble. You know, they got in planes that hit 9-11 to hit the towers. How in the world they get a hold of them planes to do that? Let me tell you, what, I, what am I saying? I believe the coming of Christ is soon. It's important that we and I, you and I, take the boldness of Paul and Barnabas to stand out to other people and tell them Jesus is the way. Got a man I've been witness to quite a bit. Well off. This man's got quite a money and all that. Great friend. Uh, knows a lot of people. I witnessed to him, gave him tracks. His son, I saw him just the other day, and uh, he asked him if he was saved. He said, yeah, and told me when he went to church at, and asked him about his dad. He said, Jim, dad thinks he can be saved by his works. He's a good man. That's foolishness. Amen? If you, if you had asked me, was he a good man? I don't know a better man, even as a Christian, better than that man. But that don't give you eternal life. Amen? It's only through Christ. And I'm certain you've got friends and loved ones with the same thought. And I believe that one day, as the body is present with the Lord, where's that going to be at? The third heaven. It's there. So I wanted to bring out, anybody got to, I talk, talk too much here. Has anyone got a comment or anything about anything I've talked about so far? Got a, something you want to add? Nope. I know I'm not doing that good a job. So to be able to be somebody got a comment. Oh. You agree with what I say that the coming of Christ is soon? Amen. Who are the uh, people on this earth today who was taking that message from Antioch all around to that area, which would be Asia Minor, what we talk about, and the major churches there will be, later you'll see Ephesus, and the seven churches is in the book of Revelations. That's where they're at around that area. God chose two men to go out and bring that message. And folks, what I can read here, thousands became children of God through the commitment of these two men. We got more than two here. Amen. And uh, not uh, uh, myself too. I think it's very important that we begin to spread the word of God to others. So he was taken out, left, were dead, but he rose up. You know, God, he had to be when he rose up and he left the next day or so. He had to have cuts all over him. He had to be bleeding everywhere. And they took him out, left him for dead. He got up and walked back in when they went out and checked on him. Do you think he was healed completely? I do. And, uh, but anyway, God's hand was there with the work. He still had more work for him to do. If I read through any one of the scriptures except my Lord Jesus Christ, I don't know of anybody that suffered as much as Paul through his ministry that he gave him. But God said, you're going to suffer many things for my name's sake. <laughs> and he certainly did. 21. And when they had preached the gospel to the city and taught many, they returned again to, uh, again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch. Now, they're on their way back. They've been here. He was stoned, and he went over to Derby and preached there. Then he heads back and heads all the way back and comes back to Antioch and gives a report there about the things. But he, as they made their way back, they still stopped at every place that they'd been, and you'll see what it says about it. They went. When they had preached the gospel to that city and taught many, they returned again to Leicester and to Iconium and Antioch, and confirming the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith that we must, through the much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Wow. Notice that. He said, listen, fellas, probably some of you know that I was stoned and left for dead. You know the suffering that possibly we're going through, but it's important that you all be, remain strong in the Lord. And we're going to point certain ones in that area for the setting that church up and went on ahead to the others. That was his way he always did. He set up a, a, as a, in a certain town, and the, many believers tried to get them together, get the leader there for them so they'd be knowing and telling them, you're going to face persecutions. But he said, with that, 
uh, confirming the soul of Simon, exhorting them to continue in the faith, verse 22, that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. And when they're ordained, and when we think about ordained here, I thought it may lay on hands and praying. I think here it is, it's used in a way that Paul and Barnabas appointed. They looked and evaluated and picked certain words for the elders in every church. And had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. And after it passed throughout Pisidia, coming back, they came to Pamphylia, and when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Atea. At Atea, what they're doing, they're coming. He's got to catch a ship there right here to Atea, right on the seashore. And he'd been there and there and here. He probably spoke in both places before they headed back to the Antioch that they started from. And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Atea and thence sailed to Antioch from whence they had been recommended at the grace of God for the work which they had fulfilled. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them. And he had opened the doors of faith unto the Gentiles. And there they abode long time with the disciples. You notice, where did they abide a long time with the disciples? Back in Antioch, here, right there. Now, they later, you're going to see they're going to go in the 15th chapter. Some of them are going to have to go back to Jerusalem because now you've got a problem definitely with circumcision and things of law that's going to be going through in the 15th chapter. But they stayed there a good while. Antioch, you know, I looked up some on that. That was a very large city at that time. This is all under Roman rule. But, I mean, it, they indicated it probably had a quarter million people. And it was a, quite a large city. So it, they were active not only just here in Antioch and their regions roundabout in, in expanding the word of God. And uh, it indicates here, at the verse 27, I want to read this again. And when they were come and gathered the church together, who's the church? Is our church the church? Every believer in here is a part of this church. Not being blank, having your name on the book. I mean, every, the church is made up of what? The body of Christ. The church is in China even. The church is there among those people that are being persecuted, of course. Now, church is everyone that had put their faith in the gospel message. So he indicates there the church that he's talking about opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And you know what why is this is important we read this? And the book of Acts is sort of like I think about the history of the church of the beginning. And opened the faith to the Gentiles. That was the beginning of that faith. You notice how many cities it went to. Many received Christ as their Savior. And folks, that was just the beginning. That later goes over to Europe. Look at the book of Philippians and other books in Europe where it goes. Those people, Paul couldn't go to all these places. He, he wanted to go to Rome. He went to Rome as a prisoner. And there he was beheaded later. Let me tell you what, only the message of Paul and those thousands that were received Christ as their Savior, folks, it was been spread other places also. Their children, their children going ahead and spreading the God's message. If I'd like, if I trace my lineage back, I would probably find that my Great great grandfather probably was one of the meanest people around and all that. Uh, but I don't know what my heritage is. I see it's from English and, and some of my heritage is from uh, German. But the thing is, think about from there taking that step, how the gospel message through the will of God is now being spread. And you and I here on 2023 stand here and look at the Word of God, have the freedom to hold that Bible in your lap and read it. There's other places, folks, a person can't even take a Bible. I'll tell you one place you can't take it now, the schools. No. But uh, <clears throat> I just, you know, we read that, you get a picture of the uh, church growing all throughout the world and to us today. Here, here at this time. 
You know, I, I'll, I'll just say this, get off shouldn't, stories. Kevin tells stories, so I'll tell a couple too. Brenda Spear sent me a thing in the paper, in the Arlington paper, gosh, oh, I think it was about 1910 or might have been early, late 1800s. Jim Beals told his address and everything, killed his wife, or probably killed his wife, and someone else, and he had left town. They were a big manhunt for him. And uh, she wanted to know if it's ever related to me. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> he probably spelled it a different way, but it had it just like my name in the paper. I actually sent the, a piece of paper on that. Uh, 15th chapter. And then we got going through work. Nobody's going to comment. John, do you have anything? Huh? huh? I got to get closer. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't have what? Oh, okay. No, they didn't have bringing the deacons, the ministers like we see today. No. You got to figure this is the very beginning of, of the, you know, that way. Now, he puts it in Timothy I, and talks about it there. Because one thing is in Timothy, Paul's getting the end of his life, and he's he's turning things over to Timothy. Here's what you need to do in these different churches, you know, put people there and come, you know, sort of over the church in that way. And one that's firm in the faith, those that are firm in the faith, so they won't drift off, you know, in that way. Someone else. You must have started when you were about 15. You hear me? You must have started when you was 15. Oh, my goodness.
Oh, no. Amen. Well, I'm, I, I'm not doubting any of those. You know, I don't, I don't know. You know, now what, I know what the experience Paul had. And like I told you, the man I related to, I know what he related to me. He was very sincere about it. And uh, that's something. And I probably you know others the same way. But uh, I know that when we're going to go there and stay, we're not going to be in this body, Right. This thing is going to be on a grave somewhere or wherever it might be, but this soul that's eternal will be in the presence of God, and so will yours. Anyone else got a comment? Jim, I, uh, I was talking to a friend a few weeks back. Bill Bodum, Bob Bodum, Bob yeah. Bodum. yeah. And I went to the hospital for him just a few days while he was still conscious. Yeah. And he got, he couldn't speak. Mm hmm. Yeah. 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 We know Paul indicates where he was at. And I can't judge anything on it, but I know no one's going to go to that third heaven and stay unless they're a born again child of God. And you won't go in a body like ours. We'll go in a body that God has prepared until he gives us his glorified body. He talks about which I believe will be at the rapture of the church. Someone else, I'm in no hurry. Might have anything. Yeah. I can't question any of those. I've never experienced any of those. I don't want to. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I just thought I'd bring it out about the third heaven. Anyone else question about what I've taught about? It's almost 15 minutes till. Uh, we'll probably let out here. I'll start in the 15th chapter. I'll let my brother Todd Deere wants to speak uh, next uh, Sunday for the service then. Hope you make plans going down to that. Uh, I know it's going to be a little bit cool. And like I say, we're gonna, there'll be a bonfire and everything there later.
might take you a jacket. Well, it looks like it's going to be in the 50s later on today. But uh, I know I've been camping a few times anyway. If it was cold out, regardless, we went out and stood, sat around the fire. How about you? You sit around the fire this time after you eat all those beans and stuff are going <laughs> to... But anyway, we'll have a good time of fellowship. That's the whole purpose of it, just to have fellowship one with the other. And I, I know we have it. I think you'll make plans to be. Let's stand and we'll be dismissed, okay? Father, we thank you for this time we had together here as your children of God to look at thy words and see, Father, how your hand was upon Paul and Barnabas as they went out to many places in the world around them to tell people about Christ. Lord, you, we're your ones that the light of the world now. We are those light. And I pray, Father, that the example we see of others in the past and how you worked among them to let the word of God spread doesn't mean we have to go over the world, but, Father, we can reach out in this area that we live in and, and show the, the love of Christ to them and reveal to them the only way to this place, this third heaven we've been talking about, is to your faith in Christ. I pray for this thing, we got activities we have over here this evening. I pray for a time of fellowship uh, among us. This I ask my Savior's name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Charlie Bass is in the hospital. Oh, my goodness. I went to pick him up this morning, and they said that he's been in the hospital for a couple of days. Oh, well. Don't know any, anything about it. You, you better check on him. He's going to be mad at some people. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Christian when they're being